Saturated versus unsaturated fats. What's the difference and why does it matter? I'm going to explain. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg with Wellness for Life. And if you like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So what is a fat? Fat is a chemical compound that's made up of primarily carbon and hydrogen. So a string of carbon atoms linked together, usually somewhere between 4 and 16 for most of the fat that we consume. And the carbon atom is one that can make four connections. So kind of like this. The carbon sits in the middle and then it can bond, it can link with four different things, either four different atoms or four different groups of some sort. So all of this happens in the fat molecule. So on the one end, that carbon is going to bind with three hydrogens. But then in the chain, it's going to bind with other carbons. So if it binds with two other carbons and the fat is saturated, then that's going to leave each carbon to bind with two hydrogens. So in the chain, it binds with two carbons and two hydrogens. And that's what we call a saturated fat. If every carbon also has a full set of hydrogen atoms connected. But sometimes the carbons connect with a double bond, meaning they use up two of these connections between them. And that only leaves them room to bind with one more hydrogen instead of two. And in nature, virtually all the time, these hydrogens are going to end up on the same side, meaning called a cis transformation. So what this means is that the molecule is going to make a bend. And this is really important for the chemical properties and for the melting point and for what sort of nutrition uh, properties that fatty acid has. So if it's a saturated fat, then it's going to make a straight line. So if it has four carbons in it, that's called butyric acid, and it occurs in butter. So butter has a combination, it has a mix of different lengths, but the butyric acid makes that butter melt much more easily than some of the longer chains. So even though butter is a saturated fatty acid, it has a relatively low melting point. That's why it melts if you rub it with your finger, for example. The eight carbon length is more like a medium chain triglyceride. Those are very common in coconut oil, for example. And if the fat is entirely made up of long chains, like the 16 carbon chain, then it's called stearic acid, which is basically candle wax. This is also what most of the beef fat is made up of. That's why beef fat and candle wax are kind of similar and they, they're solid at room temperature. So the shorter the length, the lower the melting point, the easier it is to melt it. Well, there's another property that makes it melt easy and that's if it has a kink to it. So the straighter the molecule is, the tighter they pack together. It's like side by side by side. You can just pack them together and then they sort of stick and it's harder to break them apart and then they have a higher melting point. They don't move as freely. But if they have a double bond, if they're unsaturated, they're going to have a bend to them, and now they don't pack together as well. So this would be an example of olive oil, which is monounsaturated. Olive oil, also called oleic acid. Then if it has two double bonds, if it's twice unsaturated, then it's going to pay even more bent. If it has three double bonds, then it's going to be even more bent and so on. And these molecules like fish oil will have five and six double bonds. So it's more almost like a circle in configuration. And that's why fish oil or flax oil is actually liquid in the freezer. It gets really thick, but it's still liquid in the freezer. So 
What this means, of course, is, like we said, the saturated fats are solid or semi-solid at room temperature, while the polyunsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature or even refrigerated. So this makes them useful for different things in the body. So saturated fats are great for fuel. That's what the body primarily burns for fuel if it's available. But the polyunsaturated, they are very reactive. They're great for the body for certain things. They have signaling properties. The body uses them for more specialized functions, but primarily in cell membranes because your cell membranes need to be flexible and fluid. And if they have saturated fats, then they kind of pack them together and the cell membranes are more like candle wax. They get really stiff. And then the cell membranes can't communicate and have all of these signaling properties that they're supposed to have. So we do need both. The problem with polyunsaturated is that they are very reactive because this double bond, this bond is available. It is not that hard to break. And if we expose that bond to heat or oxygen, then we can break that. So then these become very reactive. They become unstable and they become very susceptible to damage by heat and oxygen. And then the fat is called rancid and now it becomes very destructive. Now it's basically a toxin to the body. So that's a little bit more about the, the science behind it and why the fats work the way that they do and why saturated and unsaturated behave the way that they do. Uh, I made another video on the properties and what fats are best to eat for these reasons. So you can check that out right here. So we need a variety of different fats for different purposes. So the saturated fats are great for fuel. And then we need a small amount of the specialized fats. And these are what's called the essential fatty acids. And we need small amounts of them for particular reasons such as membranes. The DHA, which is a six-fold polyunsaturated uh, part of the fish oil, is what the brain and the retina is primarily made up of. So it's a building block that gives the brain certain properties. So we need a little bit of these on an ongoing basis. We can need a little bit more of the saturated for fuel, but we do need both of them. The key is to understand that the saturated fats are pretty stable they don't oxidize easily, they're stable at room temperature, and the polyunsaturated are very sensitive to heat and oxygen, so they need great care in handling so that they're not destroyed before we eat them. If you enjoy content like this, please remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell, and please share this information with as many people as you can, because this is life-saving information, and if you have people you care about, let them know about this. Thanks for watching.